talk more about these new documents, we do want to bring in Matt Murphy. He was a senior deputy district attorney in Orange County and spent 21 years assigned to the sexual assault and homicide units. Matt, thank you for being here tonight. Happy to join in. So, Matt, thousands of pages of court documents have been released about Jeffrey Epstein in just recent days. What is standing out to you? What has surprised you the most? Well, what I was, I'm, I'm a little disappointed. Most of the names um, we've already known about. And I think it's important for everybody to remember that there really is a dividing line here as far as who is associating with him. And that is 2008, which is when he was convicted of felony sex crimes against a minor. Okay, so everybody before that, uh, you know, um, almost gets a pass, I think, because there's no indication that they necessarily knew. Everybody after that was on notice that he's a registered sex offender. And uh, as far as I'm concerned, there, sh there should be no association at all. Um, I was hoping that these documents were going to bring more light to the abysmal prosecutorial failure in South Florida. They had 13 victims that came forward and they prosecuted on one, which led to this joke of a deal. I was hoping that we were going to get more information about what influence may have been brought to bear upon the local prosecutor, a man named Barry Krishner, um, who changed course in the middle of that prosecution. Another thing that I was hoping we were going to get more answers to was why Vanity Fair did not run this in 2003. A lot of the timelines on this case begin in 2005. In fact, a reporter was told about this in 2003, and Vanity Fair did not run it. And from my view, as a former sexual assault prosecutor, by not doing that, they essentially, um, they could have prevented a lot of these people from being victims. They didn't do it. Um, the reporter blamed the editors. The editors blamed the reporter. Um, either way, the victims in that case, the ones that came forward, including a 16-year-old in 2003, were kind of thrown under the bus. Um, I was hoping for more answers on that. We'll see if those are coming in future uh, releases of new documents. Okay, Matt, there are two more questions I wanted to get to with you. Um, first, you know, we've seen many of these high-profile names mentioned in the documents. Do you see any indication at this point that any of these men were involved in the abuse? Well, there are there have been accusations against some. There were accusations against Prince Andrew from the royal family. That case settled, um, I believe, last year uh, for an undisclosed amount. There there have also been allegations. There were allegations against Alan Dershowitz that that should be pointed out. The victim later recanted and said she made a mistake, um, and he accepted that. So there are certainly um, some people that knew a lot more than others. There are certainly indications that some may have even been. Participants in this, although it's important for everybody to remember the vast majority of the people that associated with Jeffrey Epstein, that there are no allegations against them. Donald Trump was another one who had nothing to do with him, my understanding was, after his arrest. Most people, a lot of the famous names stopped associating with him after he was arrested and convicted of sex crimes, but some didn't. And I, and I think there still needs to be a reckoning. You know, the old saying, lay down with dogs and you wake up with fleas. There are people that deserve some scrutiny for continuing to associate, especially in New York, where I am now. He was a socialite. You know, Jelaine Maxwell or Ghislaine Maxwell, um, who was recently convicted, Vanity Fair magazine invited her to their Oscar party in 2011. That was after Jeffrey Epstein was convicted and this information came to light. That's inexcusable to me. I, I, don't, I don't, I I cannot, I can't wrap my head around that at all. They also wrote an article in 2011 where they referred to the systematic sexual abuse of minors as sexual picadillos, the word that Vanity Fair used. It is it is astounding to me. And there's an excellent article in The New Yorker that was published last year entitled, Why Didn't Vanity Fair Run This Article or Run This Story on Jeffrey Epstein? It's worth a read for all the listeners. You can Google it. It is, um, it is a, a very intensive, detail-oriented review of that. Um, it was a journalistic failure, every bit as bad as I believe the prosecutorial failure was in Florida in, in 2006. All right. We appreciate your time, Matt Murphy, as always. Thank you. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.